In this video, we're going to be installing the free version of Oracle Database 23 AI and Oracle SQL Developer. Now, as you might imagine, there are lots of different types of Oracle Database versions. There's the Oracle Database Enterprise Edition. That's the full-featured, very expensive version. So you would install that on a server at work. Well, we're going to go down several levels to a free version. And you can see that I have searched for Oracle Database Free, and I've got a link here to Database 23 AI Free. It was previously known as Database 23 C, C meaning cloud. But as there's now a focus on AI as well as developer productivity, they've changed the name to Oracle Database 23 AI. Now there is a free version, and if I click on this, you can see that you can use up to two CPUs, central processing units, two gigabytes of RAM, and 12 gigabytes of user data on disk. So if you're doing much more intensive computing, that would be a problem and you need to upgrade to a higher version. But for us, for this course, that's absolutely fine. Now, if I scroll down, we'll see near the bottom, there is a link to Oracle Database Software Downloads. And if I click that, here we've got the Oracle Database Free. So you can see more details on premises or cloud, free to develop, deploy and distribute, and ideal for developing and deploying small applications. So you can use it for your own personal or business reasons, but it is constrained with those two gigabytes of RAM and 12 gigabytes of user disk limits. So I'm going to go down to download Oracle Database Free for Windows Zip, and that will download a zip. Now you can see that there are other download options. So if I click on this link, the Oracle Database 23 AI Free Get Started, you can see that there are installation guides for Linux and for virtual boxes and other operating systems. But we're going to stick in this video to Windows. So this is now downloading. It says x64, what does that mean? It's for 64-bit computers. Now that will be most Windows computers nowadays, especially if you're running Windows 10 or Windows 11 or later. So if you've got a 32-bit computer, you won't be able to use this 23AI version. Instead, you would have to find and download an 11G Express Edition. Now what are these numbers? 11, 23, well, these are the numbers that Oracle gives to all of its releases. The version 10 came out in 2003, the 11G in 2007, the 12C came out in 2013, and then they started doing what Microsoft were doing with Office 2007 and 2010. So they jumped next from a 12C to an 18C version released in 2018, then a 19C, a 21C, and it would be a 23C, except they've renamed it as 23AI. The C means cloud and G means grid computing, which supports clusters of services treated as one unit. So now we've gone from G to C to 23 AI. So you can see that my file is still downloading. So I'm going to pause the video until it's downloaded. Well, now you can see it is downloaded and it's a really big file, about 1.2, 1.3 gigabytes. So I'm going to extract it. So I will right and click on the zip and go to extract all. And it will create a new folder called in this case, Windows X64 and the version name and then free and click extract. So this will take just a few seconds. So you can see everything being extracted into this folder. So once it is completed, I will go into this folder. You can delete the zip if you want, you won't need it anymore. And among the files that we've got, we have got setup. So I'm going to double click on setup. So you can see Microsoft Defender Smart Screen prevented an unrecognized app from starting. Well, I want it to start, I know what it is. So I'm going to click on more info and then run anyway. But before you run, make sure that you've got adequate antivirus programs installed on your computer. So I'm going to click on run anyway. It then says, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? 
I'm going to say yes, and now it is getting ready to start to install. So you can see now it says installing, except it isn't really installing, it's just getting ready for the install program. So now it says it will install this program on your computer. To continue, click next. So then read the license agreement. So I'm going to say I accept the terms, click next. It then says where it's going to install Oracle Database 23 AI. Now you can change it if you want to. One reason for changing it might be that you've got a small C drive, but a big D drive. So if you want to change it, click on change, but that's fine for me. Now at the time of recording, you need to do a little extra work with the root folder. So it should be a folder that is on its own. You're not going to fill anything else in that folder. So here is Windows Explorer and I'm going to create a new folder called app. So let's click on new folder and call it app, a double P. Next, I'm going to right and click on that folder and go to properties and then go to security and then go to advanced. What I need to do first of all is click on disable inheritance. So I want to convert all inherited permissions into explicit permissions on this object. And secondly, I want to get rid of authenticated users. So I'll click on authenticated users and click on remove and then okay and okay. So hopefully, that is something that they will build into the product. Oracle know about it. Why they haven't done this already, I have no idea. So next we'll go to next and we need to enter a system password. Now this will have access to basically the entirety of your data. So make sure you choose a really good password. So one with symbols and uppercase letters, numbers and lowercase letters, for example. So I'm going to write one here and enter it a second time and click next. So here are all of my folders and now I click install. Oracle Database 19C took about 20 minutes to install. 21C took about 10 minutes to install. So what I'm going to do is speed up this video and just let it install. And if you find that it rolls back, well make sure you create the folder first with all of those permissions that I mentioned earlier. So there's a new pop-up box come onto my computer and it says Windows Security, do you want to allow public and private networks to access the Java platform SE binary? So I'm going to click on allow. So there's also this secondary dialog box which tells me how well things are installing. So it took around 10 minutes to install, but once we created the root folders with all of the permissions, there were no problems whatsoever. So I can click finish. And now that is Oracle 23AI installed on my computer. In the previous video, we installed Oracle Database. That's the back engine, the bit that does all of the work. But what about the front engine? What we are going to actually use? Well, for this, we're going to use a program called Oracle SQL Developer. Now you can see that I've searched for SQL Developer and here we've got SQL Developer Downloads. So we'll click on this and then if I scroll down, what we need is the Windows 64-bit with JDK11 included. That's the Java Development Kit. So I'll click on Download and now you can see it is downloading. So I'm just going to pause the video until it's downloaded. So you can see it is now downloaded. So I will open that folder and you can see again, it is a zip file. So I will, I will right and click on it and go to extract all. And that will extract it into a folder called SQL developer. So this will just take a few minutes. So I'll pause the video until it's extracted. So now you can see we've got this SQL developer folder. So I'll double click on it, double click on SQL developer as well. And here we've got SQL developer.exe. Now this is not an install program. It actually is the program itself. 
so you might want to move this folder to somewhere else as this will be the program that you will use for interacting with Oracle database. But for now, I'm just going to leave it in downloads and double click on the application called SQL Developer. And it starts to open. And here it is. So this is Oracle SQL Developer, and this is where we can create all the queries we want against our database. But first of all, we need to also connect to our database. So to do that, I'm going to click on create a connection manually, or I can click on the plus sign at the top left. So I'm going to create a database connection. So this is my database, I need to give it a name. And I need to have a username and a password. Well, the username is sys, and the password is the password that you created while installing Oracle database. I'm going to check save password and I need to change the role to sysdba. This is necessary using either sysdba or sysoper if I'm using the username sys. So now I'll click on connect and you can see that we've got an error. It says Lister does not know of the SID. So the SID by default has been put in as XE. And what I found for my version at least is if I just get rid of XE, then if I click on test, you can see that we have got success. So I'm going to connect with my username of sys, my password that I previously created when installing the Oracle database, and my role of sysdba, and I'm saving the password. You can also change the color, which is the color of all of the tabs that will come up, but I'm going to leave it as none. So if you're connecting to multiple databases, you can have one database in one color and another database with a tab in another. So let's click connect. And here we can see we are now connected to our database. So let's say that I close this tab and close Oracle SQL Developer. And now just double click on SQL Developer again to go back into it. You can see that our database connection is here and I can either click on this database or click on database up here at the top left. So if I open this again and click on this database and expand it, you can see we once again are connected to our database. So in this video, we have installed Oracle SQL Developer and have connected to our database. And for me, this is the most complicated bit done. We have installed the backend Oracle database and now the frontend SQL developer and we've created a connection between the two. So now we can use this to query our database. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to know about how to query, then I hope you will join us in our Oracle SQL course. You can find this by going to idodata.com and going to SQL where you will see the 1Z0071 Oracle SQL Developer Course and the 1Z0171 Oracle SQL Developer Course, which is for Oracle's latest certification. So you'll be able to learn all about the select statement and data types and functions, data, transactions and constraints, and expanding queries and more. So to do this, please go to our website, idodata.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it. And why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.